everyone, Jen here. So today we're going to make a really cute sign um, with the Friends logo on it. So I saw this on Pinterest and I thought it was really, really cute and my niece is totally into Friends stuff. So I thought that this would be a really cute idea for her. So um, what you need is some type of long sign. So I have this beware sign left from Halloween. But I know the Dollar Tree is always coming out with some type of sign. So, and yours doesn't have to look exactly like mine. So, um, but you need this, some paint, um, and these little uh, clothespins from the Dollar Tree. And then uh, we're going to get started with that. All right, you guys. So for our friend sign, the first thing I did was use the Dollar Tree spackling and filled in my nail holes. So this has been drying for a while. So now I'm gonna sand it off. And you wanna be careful because with the spackling, sometimes it does kinda of wanna clump and, and bring everything out with it. So this is my Dollar Tree sanding sponge. They also have the sanding paper, the sandpaper in a lighter grit. Um, if you have that, I would use that instead of this block because this is really, really rough. So you just wanna um, very carefully sand off the edges or the, the top just so you have a nice flush area and the key with this stuff is to make sure it okay so now that this is pretty much dry I have one little itty bitty spot right there um, I'm gonna go with my Nimbus paint and do some distressing and put in some of the lines. All right, so normally I would use a yardstick, but my yardstick is packed away from my classroom. So I'm gonna use um, just this wooden stake I had laying around. Anything that you could have that was long enough to cover the whole thing. I don't like to use a ruler because then sometimes it can be off. I like to use the yardstick or something long like this. Um, so, I'm going to use a Sharpie and just put a line in here. And don't worry, we're going to distress this so it won't look so dark. And I'm really not pressing very hard because, you know, I don't want to stand off a ton. Okay, so now we can go in with our Nimbus paint and do some distressing. I really like this paint because it's it's not so it's not so dark and it really does just enough, I think. It's a really really light gray color, um really light gray. So I'm going to just dry brush just a little bit and like I said I have my paint palette here and it really is going to give me, you can't even hardly see it here. You know what, I think that might be a little too white. You know what though, I've found the solution to my problem because it doesn't show up on the white, which means I can use this as white because I am dying for white paint. So um, I used this on another project, but I didn't have white under it, and it really was pretty. I had brown under it, and then I put that on top, and it showed up perfectly. So um, yeah, not on the white. So let's find a different color. Um, let's see here. How about, do I have any truffle? Ooh, how about truffle? Alright, so I don't want like super brown. So what I'm thinking is maybe mixing some of that Nimbus with the truffle
just to lighten it up a little bit. Yeah, that's pretty. Okay, that's just about the color I need. Of course, my brush is saturated, so I'm going to pull out another brush and just kind of dab into this paint here and kind to distress. I really want to focus on the edges. I'll put some more paint right there. And wherever you get it just a little too dark, it's okay because, we, like I said, we are going to sand this and distress it a little bit more. I want to focus on the edges. See what I mean by this paint palette over here? Don't you love having a spot to do your paint and you're not ruining your table? <laughs> Like, if you guys have seen my mat under here, you know that I have a problem with the getting paint everywhere. Oops. See, I got that spot just a little too dark. That's okay, because we're going to sand it out. Alright, so I think I'm good with my dry brushing here. We're going to let this dry and then we're going to sand. Okay, so now I'm going to distress this a little bit because it is all the way dry. So I'm just going to use my sanding sponge from Dollar Tree and I'm going to sand down, especially on those lines and the areas where I colored too dark. Just be careful when you're up here around your um, caulking or your spackle. Okay, now I'm going to uh, wipe this off with a damp cloth just to get the dust off, and then we're going to start painting. Okay, so I vacuumed this all off and have run a little rag over it, trying to get all the, the dust off. Now we're going to paint. So I have my letters. I printed this off. I wrote it down for you. In... 230 point font it's uh, I got my font from defont.com and it's Gabriel Weiss font and so now I'm going to trim up my letters so I can place them I also did print one dot just because I want it to be uniform when I do my um, dots in between my letters So this is a really easy, fun trick for stenciling. And I really, honestly, I love the way that I do this. And I know a lot of other people use the same way. I'm not claiming this as my own by any means. But this is a, a very simple way. I, I do own a Cricut. But um, I find that hand-painted letters are just more, they're fun. 
and I think it gives a little bit of a personal touch to your work. And it's really fast. Like I sometimes I don't want to pull out my Cricut because I keep it put away. And so this is just a really easy way to avoid getting out the Cricut. <laughs> but so I'm going to place my letters and I'm going to use my um, slat lines as guidelines. I'm going to go all the way to the end. I wasn't sure how big to make my font. That looks pretty good. Okay, so the, what you want to do is on your letters, you want to shade the back with a pencil. Then once you have that done and you place your letter where you want it, Then you trace over your letter and this is going to leave a stencil for you to paint or an outline if for you to paint on your board. Okay, and it's very, very faint. It's hard to see. Um, I see, can see it just fine. It's just hard to see on camera. I'm going to trace it a little bit so maybe you can see it. Now if you were doing a dark paint, then if you did this same process using chalk, then it would show up on your um, board. I don't know if you can see that or not. Can you see the little E there? You can kind of see it. So you're going to do the same thing with all your letters. Now I'm going to put a little dot in between each one of my letters, so I think I'm going to do that now. just so I get my spacing right. So I'm going to keep going through all the letters. This will, this will be a long time on video. So I'm going to stop my video and come back when I'm ready to paint. Okay, so I have all my letters on. Now I'm going to use my black painter's pen that I got at Walmart. And I'm going to trace my letters. So then I'll just color this in, and so I want to do my le all my letters in the black pen, and you just color it in, you know, once you trace it, you just color it in, and then we're going to do our dots in a different color. Okay, so I have my letters on here. <clears throat> it looks really cute, and let me see if I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to put in my dots. And also, <clears throat> you want to paint your clothespins. So I painted nine. I don't know that I'll need nine, but I used um, chalk paint. So I used Crimson um, Royal. Is that called Royal? Ocean. <laughs> it's called Ocean. Crimson Ocean and Maze, I believe, was the other one. And so I'm going to paint my dots those same colors. And so I'm just going to pull out a little bitty paintbrush 
Um, these are dry, but I, you can see I put them on a jumbo popsicle stick and a piece of foam, and that left me uh, able to paint them, which was nice. Okay, so with my little bitty paintbrush, I'm going to paint um, some... Oh, no! It's okay. Didn't ruin anything. Thank goodness. I'm going to paint some dots. I'm going to do red first. And so I'm just going to paint these dots here, and I might have to go over it a couple times. If you have uh, paint markers that match this color, that would probably be awesome. It would be easier. It would be less time consuming because you won't have to worry about making, um, going over it again. I do have a red uh, paint, mark paint marker, but I didn't want to do like just red and then, you know. So I'm going to do red, blue, yellow, red is what I'm thinking. And this is, these little dots do not have to be perfect at all. So don't, um, don't worry about that. Then let's see, the next color is going to be, what did I say, red? I don't know what I said. Red, blue, yellow, I think I said. Oh my gosh. Okay, sorry about that. I kind of like, totally cut out. I will tell you why. It's because I somehow managed to get white chalk paint all over my hand. I don't even know where I had white, wet chalk paint. And I touched my phone and I got chalk paint all over my phone. So, not cool. And you could really use any color of blue or yellow that you want. I just happen to have these colors on hand. So it's not as bright as I would really like, but it shall do. It will work. I feel like my red one needs another coat. All right, now we're going to add the yellow. I love that chalk paint dries so quickly. The yellow is going to need a couple coats because it is so light. While that's drying, I'm going to look at my clothespins and figure out what I want to do with those. So I'm going to use some E6000 and some hot glue. I'm going to get that ready. But what I want to do is put my clothespins kind of where I want them. And these are going to be to hang photos. So I'm thinking I've got three more left. I don't know if I want to just spread these out. So that she has plenty of room to put either portrait or landscape photos. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Okay. 
Okay. I think that's where I'm going to put them. And so we're going to do some hot glue and then some, um, or some E6000 and some hot glue because the E6000 will hold permanently and the hot glue will hold instantly. So that's always a fun trick when you're using the E6000 and the hot glue. I just, I have had instances before, not on the projects, but like when at, at school, where I had put um, clothespins on things and they just fall off. And what is the trick to not have your E6000 glue itself into the lid? I mean, really, what is the trick? All right, so I'm gonna do some E6000. Try not to make a hot mess. And some hot glue. See, it kind of ran out on me. The hot glue. I think it's the hot glue, actually. And it's already curing. Curing. Oh, stuff everywhere. Okay, so I pulled out my little Fiskars X-Acto knife, and I'm very carefully cutting just the glue, not the wood, and then peeling off, scraping off that excess glue. <clears throat> Alright, so let's do another one here. Be very, I should get out my should have gotten out my mini glue gun. That would have been better. The good thing is I do have a line there, so they're, they're all going to be even. You don't have to worry about that. That's nice. we'll have left to do is to figure out a hanger the hanger situation so um, I actually will probably put some type of ribbon or twine or something and glue it to the back um, Dollar Tree does sell like picture hangers and so that is also an option I may do both just because it is a gift I'm not sure what type she'll like, so I may do I may do both for her, so she has options on how she wants to hang it. Almost done. Two left. I'm really losing just very little hot glue. I think she's going to love this. I think it's so funny that my niece is into friends because that was popular when, you know, 
I was not, I wouldn't say high school, college, um, but she is a sophomore. And so I think it's just really funny that she's into that now. <laughs> you know, expect like, that's what, you know, her mom and I watch that stuff. So <laughs> it's just funny to see that she's into it. I love it, but um, I think it's cute. So we're going to let this dry for sure because um, I don't want to bother those clothespins. But I'm going to figure out a hanging situation. I'm really trying to cover up that um, middle line there. But other than that, guys, we are pretty much done. One thing we can do while this is drying is cut away the paper. So I'm going to use my X-Acto knife. <clears throat> and it just cuts away really easily. Um, when you get over here, because you have, it's kind of a funny cut board, so just take your time. I should have cut it before I put the clothespins on. I didn't think about it. Luckily, this is a long, a long, pointy knife. You can get under there, but it'd be, it would have been easier if I'd have cut at least just this bottom part off before. But I mean, you can see it is cutting right off. No big deal. So I'm going to finish doing this and we will um, work on the hanger. Alright guys, so we're ready to put a hanger on the back of this sign. So um, my E6000 is dry, the hot glue is dry, everything feels really secure. I wanted to show you a really quick, easy <laughs> cheat if you will, for a hanger. So, I pulled off some pop tabs and then I simply bent them up just a smidge and we're gonna attach these to the back of this frame using hot glue and E6000. And this will give a nice place for a nail to go. Now this is just because I didn't happen to have any of the um, hangers from Dollar Tree. Uh, I used my last one. I did have a picture frame I was going to take one off of, but I wasn't sure if I was going to need it or not. So we're going to go with these pop tabs. Okay, so I'm going to glue down these pop tabs. I just wanted you to see like they're not bent very much. I just barely pulled up just enough where the nail could stick under the, t the, the top of the tab. So I'm going to just glue these down, like I said, with a little hot glue and a little E6000. So I'm going to put the, the E6000 on the back. I'm going to put the hot glue right here. Now, I'm also going to put some twine on here because I don't know how my niece will want to hang this. So I'm going to put this in a little knot. And if she doesn't want to use this, she can just pull it off, cut it off, whatever. Not a big deal. <clears throat> so I'm going to put a little knot. 
and that's just to help hold the glue. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Do that not too far down. Too far up, I suppose. And then it's really done. So I'm gonna let this dry and then I'll give you guys a nice shot of it hanging up. All right guys, this turned out really super cute. I just had one of the stock photos from a picture frame I had hanging around, but I love it. I think my niece is gonna love it. It's so, so cute. And I also just found out that next year our, our school t-shirts are gonna have the Friends um, logo on them. So I think that was kind of cool. Uh, I may have to make one of these for my classroom just because our shirts are going to have that logo. So I think this is really cute. I know my niece is going to love it. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification so you don't miss any of my uploads. And as always, keep crafting and we'll see you next time.